And away we go. It is the nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. Brought to you, as always, by our good friends at Galactic Fried Chicken. Visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything galactic. Get it delivered via Uber Eats or stop down in Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up, save 15%. Remember, new schedule for the remainder of 2022. Closed on Monday and Tuesday. Open Wednesday through Sunday to get your fried chicken goodness. All right, Aaron. Yesterday, we put a cap on the summer. Yes. Our favorite storylines of the summer, what we talked about this summer. Um, now it's time to, to get to work. As I said on the BBP tonight, for me, every year, the start of football season is my annual sit down with Luke Fickle. And that usually happens a day or two before the start of camp. Tomorrow, Tuesday, August 2nd, the Bearcats report. Wednesday is their first practice at Nippert Stadium. Thursday, they report to higher ground. Friday, the first practice at higher ground. So it's go time. So I thought the next two days... Or at least today, and maybe we take a break and we come back on Wednesday. But sometime within the next three days, we're going to do our two deep. Today, we're going to start offense. And then when we do the second one, it'll be defense. Okay. I I, I never want to say we're going to do something tomorrow on the nightcap. Just in case. Just in case. Like, what is what if something major happens tomorrow? We're like, well, we told you guys we were... We were going to do the 2D for defense, so we have to ignore this major storyline or whatever it is. I never, I don't, I don't want to pigeonhole us in that fashion. I get it. So today we're going to do the 2D for offense. Do you want to start at the top or do you want to start at the bottom and build? Um, I mean, we can start, we can start really wherever. There's, uh, well, there's one way to start. Let's let's start with the easiest. Start at the top. Quarterback. Quarterback. We can either start with basically what I'm saying is we can start a quarterback, we can finish a quarterback. No, let's start a quarterback because it's gonna be the thing that we talk the most about and probably. Yeah. So um I'll I'll give away, I'll I'll tease a little bit, but give away a little bit of my conversation with Luke. He clearly acknowledged <laughs> we are we're not going to tell you when we make our decision at quarterback but we would like to make our decision at quarterback right around the two-week mark of camp they want to give these guys two weeks to compete we're basically a month from the season right mm-hmm. two weeks to compete and then two weeks for one guy to be the number one guy heading in to the season opener in arkansas i still think all things considered, Ben Bryant takes the field for the first snap at Arkansas. Okay. I I'm I'm we'll find out over the next two weeks how each of them do at camp. Mm-hmm. But you're going into a hostile environment. You've got a quarterback that has 13, 14 starts under his belt now. The logical choice for a conversation like this is that Ben Bryant will likely be the starter week one. So you say the logical choice. Sure. The likely choice. I I think logical was actually the proper word. Um, I think both are accurate. I don't, I'm not going anything likely yet, yet. Um, And I say that because Evan Prater was the starter on with the ones at the spring game. Interesting. I also say that. They took equal reps with the ones. I also say that because Evan Prater was the highest ranked recruit ever. We've covered the holy hell out of that. um, Ever for the Bearcats. And he brings a certain electricity about him. Sure. Ben Bryant is simply never going to have. I, to an extent, I disagree there. 
Because what if Ben Bryan is throwing bombs to Nick Mardner and Tyler Scott and Trey Tucker? It's a different electricity. It's still electricity. It, 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 it's an electricity, sure. But it's a different electricity. And I, I think that, that obviously both quarterbacks bring something very, very different to the table. If Evan Prater is able to get his arm to where – he can connect on some of those bombs, then it's his job to lose. But we, I don't know. I, this is, this is, it's crazy. This is crazy because I don't know. I mean, nobody knew what Des Ritter had. Not like. Well, and the thing was Des Ritter, let's, let's be honest. Des Ritter benefited immensely because at a very early stage, Luke Fickle said, this is my guy. And I'm ride or die on Desmond Ritter. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was not who Des was on the field when that decision was made. A lot of that was who Des was in the locker room and who he could become on the field after going and working with Jordan Palmer, after, you know, the, the two off seasons of understanding going into 2020 and then coming back and going into 2021, understanding there's well, a lot I need to work on. There's a even, lot I need to, to perfect. Even the simple maturity of becoming a dad, like that's, there's something to be said for that. And that was, but, that was late in the process. It, sure. It was, it, it, it's part of it. Absolutely. But I mean, that changes your, that changes your whole mindset about everything. You're not you're almost 40 and, you just now had a kid. You haven't really matured yet, so <laughs> you, should, you should see me dadding out here in these in in these walls, man. Come Look, on. man, you left yourself wide open it's, for that it's one. Fine, you don't. You, you, you <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm dead in my asshole. <laughs> um, but it'll be interesting to see, like, if Evan does win, is it? plant my flag this is the guy going forward or that same argument could be that same argument could be made for ben right yeah like, so I, I think that's what ben still... has less i guess my point is ben has a, a smaller window they planted that flag on des in 2018 and said who, who has the shorter leash depends on who wins the job even even still Say, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, who are they going to give more leeway to? Do you think, like, even even in winning the job, in your estimation, I still like the veteran still like, and and again, like Hayden Moore was the veteran, and 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 Des won the job. Like, there are examples of any way you want to look at this. They planted their flag with Dez. They wrote it out. That's why Ben Bryan had to leave. I just almost but, feel like you're, you're holding that against Evan Prater for staying in the program and not having started, right? No, like, I'm saying Evan has the Dez thing. The where, Dez factor, yeah. Where they said, that that's my whole point, talking about what Dez. they did with Dez. Okay. Do they plant their flag on Evan Prater and say, this is our quarterback? And he's going to be our quarterback until he's not a Bearcat. Because that's know. essentially what Luke Fickle did with with Des, right? right? He said, I'm riding or dying with Desmond Ritter. And he wrote it to being one of the top quarterbacks in the draft and being the, the third winningest quarterback in the history of college football. Does, does Evan win that flag? Or does Ben, you're the veteran. We need a veteran. We have a potentially dynamic air attack, and yeah. you're the better passer. Like it, it, it it's fascinating. There, Time there's so many right. angles. Time and, will and, tell. And, and we that's got, why we... I didn't ask Luke today. I didn't really ask him much about who's going to be your quarterback. I asked him more about what's what's the next couple weeks look like. What's the window? How is this going to be decided? And what are we 
uh, going to figure out when you announce your quarterback 30 minutes before kickoff in Arkansas? Because <laughs> we're not going to know, man. We're not going to know. We could we could talk quarterback for another half hour, but we got other positions we need to discuss tonight. So let's move on. Okay. Next next position would be halfback. Uh, at, halfback at, at halfback, Ethan Wright. Running was, back. What is a halfback? What's halfback. a halfback? Run, running back, fine. Ethan Wright was your guy getting the, the spot with the ones at the spring game. Well, Obviously. Ryan Montgomery was injured he, or I, limited. I'm looking at what I wrote. I know. I'm 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 explaining it. Ryan Montgomery was injured. Um Charles McClellan still he got the he got the the bulk of the snaps with the ones after Ethan Wright. Yeah. And then you know, the the, the other Montgomery Miles was with the twos. Is still my sleeper Lur- here. Lurkin. Still my sleeper here, but Corey Kiner changes everything. Everything. Let's be real. Let's be real. I think, uh, I think Ryan, uh, and, and it's so hard because I don't want to give away the whole fickle interview from today so, so because go. there were so many enlightening things that he said on each of these spots. All right. This was one of them where he said, here's what I'll say. He said they want a bell cap. They want a number one back. They don't want running back by committee. They don't want to do it situationally. They Chad, want a lead guy. That's not news, though. We've seen. I know. Mike, and that's what he said. Mike Warren, Warren, Jared Mike Dokes, Dokes. Jared Dokes. Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford. Absolutely. So they want a number one guy. Who is that number one guy? I think this comes down to. Ultimately, Ryan Montgomery versus uh, Corey Kiner. And we'll see how things look at camp. I I think talent-wise, everybody expects it to be Corey Kiner. At the AAC interview that Luke Fickle gave, he said that running back was going to be one of the hardest positions to determine, largely based on the fact that they aren't allowed to really go like full game speed hitting and all of that. Watching running backs at camp sucks. It's terribly difficult and no one's really hitting because nobody wants to be the guy that injured the running back or the running back isn't trying to go full boomstick into a linebacker or, you know, whoever, uh, a defensive back or anything because again, risking injury, like, yeah, so it's everybody's kind of half, half speed in it, which unfortunately is when people get injured because no one should be half speeding it because you don't, you're well, doing, you learn how doing, to, it's, it's still, like a, it's like a choreographed play, right? Yeah. Like you learn how to do the dance, how, how to dance. Right. Yeah. Um, if I had to pick game one, Arkansas, who's the starting running back? You going veteran again? I'll go Corey Kiner. I think he wins the job. I I think think he wins wins the job. job. From everything I've heard, he's done everything right. Like that's the big thing in this program when you transfer in, right? Like the buy-in. You do you are you a good teammate? Are you in the weight room with Brady and those guys busting your ass? It's the buy-in. Are you about the right things? And everything I've heard from Corey since he's gotten here is he's about the right things. I think he I think he wins the job. All right, we're almost 14 minutes into this. When we've done two positions, so wide receiver. The this ones, might be a this might be a long one. Sorry, the ones ran out. It's a out. duty. It's important. I'm, I'm we're trying here. The the wideouts ran out. Nick Mardner, Tyler Scott, Trey Tucker with the ones. Obviously, that changes. Um, I I, I think Jaden Scott gets the nod, or Jaden Thompson. Jayden Thompson. Sorry, Jaden Thompson right. gets the nod. At boundary in Jayden, a close, heated competition with Nick Mardner throughout camp. Jaden and Chris Scott were both out. Yeah. That day. So uh Trey Tucker in the slot, Will Pauling behind him, Tyler Scott at the field spot, uh Chris Scott, Drew Donnelly in the mix there. Drew Donnelly also in the mix, a little bit of boundary, uh Blue Smith. Uh, had a good spring, I. But Can't he's in a difficult him. spot, man. Like, Can't there's carry dudes. Him. There's dudes. Well, I mean, he was a dude when he was recruited at Ohio State. Okay, but that was 
you know, 14 years ago. That was a long time ago. You're right. <laughs> so, like, you got to you gotta pass these guys that are ahead of you. That's not saying I, I doubt. I get Will it. Smith at all. I get it. But the six guys we just listed, like, without seven even guys saying, we just listed. Without even saying Will Pauling. No, I said Will Pauling. He'll, he'll, he'll be okay. in the slot behind Trey yeah. Tucker. Um, and then you throw in, like, a Quincy Burroughs who everybody inside the program has raved about. He's a dude. That's one of the topics that I think everybody's going to find maybe the most interesting is redoing that wide receiver room when I talked to Luke and, like, how it was accomplished and where they're at. I think that was a really, really fun and interesting conversation with Luke. Tight end. Josh and Lenny. How much can they get Shaman on the field? Like, that's... That's the that's the biggest question at tight end because yeah he's played his way into being on the field, but so have the other guys. He's the not- other guys are all conference, all American, like you know, NFL tight, draft pick guys, tight end finalist award winners, right? And the other guy might be more talented than not, anybody else on the not, roster. Not award winners, but award preseason nominees, right? Yeah, we'll see. The the, the fascinating question here, like we talked about on the BBP. Is Geno's offense, how much 12 personnel, how much are you getting those guys on the field? Like, is there a focus on we want to run the ball, we want to be about power, and then our tight ends are the safety valves. Or the- when, when you put when you play three tight ends with Lenny, Josh, and Shimon, and you have three receivers out there instead of tight ends, but can also block just in case you decide to run the ball. Yeah. It's it's going to be fascinating at tight end. Can Josh stay healthy early in camp? Can Josh stay healthy? No, the the, the big you know the crazy part. The biggest problem Josh has had is they have. So let me be careful how I say this. The NCAA makes you the first like three practices ease into uh, pads. Josh has gotten hurt in two of the, his years here in those first three days coming down on his shoulder after making a catch. Cause he doesn't have full pads. Cause he doesn't have pads on. Why are we not protecting the, 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 the pads are for fucking protection. Sorry to drop an F bomb on this show. My, I don't know, man. but I, I do have, I do have insider information that the Bearcats did sign a contract with guardian helmets. So. That doesn't do anything for Josh's not, shoulder. Not for not for shoulders, but they they are <laughs> they are watching out for. Yeah, I, I, I like that, that's not a UC thing. It's an NCAA thing. You're not allowed to. There's a acclimation period where you're supposed to ease into it. Um, I I would put shoulder pads on Josh, and if they had a problem with it, I would give them double middle fingers and be like, "This guy needs to have shoulder pads on because yeah, just put him in the pads." Yeah. Um, offensive line. I don't really want to say anything here because I think the interview with Luke is, is fascinating. Okay. I, I think your Both. left tackle is set. I think okay. your, your center is set. I think your right tackle is probably set. I'll give you what they ran out for the, for the spring game, which is obviously very different. Uh, people were out, but. Yeah. Tunstall, Tunstall was at the at left tackle. Tunstall is your left tackle. There, there's no question. Jeremy Cooper was your left guard. Gavin Gerhart was at center because Renfro was out. Renfro is your center. Joe Huber was at right guard, and Dylan O'Quinn was at right tackle. I think they are they are very happy with Dylan O'Quinn at right tackle. He's an all conference right tackle. Yeah. I also think he's probably a better guard. A little undersized compared to the German. Metz has been out most of the summer and and working back from injuries. You remember that he played with a club. A club. A full club on his giant arm. <laughs> like a like a villain in a Bond movie. His club would have fit my torso. <laughs> right. They could have just put it over your head. 
and it would have looked like a like a like a body <laughs> cast. Um, John Williams has moved to guard. He still has experience at tackle. Is he a factor to win one of the guard spots? Uh, Gavin Gerhardt is technically a guard, but because they needed him to, with Renfro having a hip issue, he learned to play center. And then this spring, he was actually he got good at it. Pretty good. It's like when he first started playing center, it was like, uh, I don't know about this. <laughs> and then, you know, nine, ten months later, like he he had learned it. Yeah, but it's not an easy position to just take on. You're snapping and then you have to be two hands like and you're calling the protection right you're like there's a lot to it there's a yeah. lot to it um but he's a guard is there a possibility we see him at guard in the 2d is there a possibility maybe for the betterment of his future you see renfro kick out and and gerhardt at center like it's interesting because you feel, like I said, you feel confident. Renfro at center, Tunsil and O'Quinn at your tackles, and a lot of possibility at guard. I asked Luke today, straight up, do we see the five guys that started in the Cotton Bowl as your starting offensive line at Arkansas day one? And he gave me one of those. See how camp goes. Which means jobs are up for grabs, which is what that means. Like they're confident oh. with what they have. But if you can get better and remember, you've got a new O-line coach. You've got a new set of eyes determining what these starting spots look like. They want to accomplish different things. So are we saying all five spots are up for grabs? No. We're saying, does the starting offensive line look like it did in the Cotton Bowl? And the answer was, maybe so, maybe not. So two spots? Or well, that like, or, the guards, or, the guards? or do they find somebody they like better at right tackle so O'Quinn can be a guard? I guess my point is, we know quarterback is a question mark. We know running back is a question mark. We know one of the wide receiver spots is a question mark. Tight end work be we, we we good, yeah. So three, and of the five, let's see what happens at camp. I think they like if they had to if they had to go to Arkansas and start Tunstall, Cooper, Renfro, Metz, O'Quinn, they would be happy. What I'm saying is, they're going into camp and saying everybody win their win their job. How do I go from happy to elated? Right. How do I go from happy to Deshaun Watson? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had... It is what it is. It's the nightcap. I just ruined the ending. You did? It wasn't a happy ending. Right here on Bearcat Journal.com. See ya. <laughs>